button again now. So we'll we'll start off and over to you, Aaron and Jeremy. Thank you. And we will, um, we're recording, so you will be able to learn that TikTok dance that we're going to teach at the yes. end um, if you watch the recording <laughs> later. I know I need to watch those things a few times before I really get the hang of it. So anyways, um, welcome to our session. Uh, and uh, great to see everybody at the DL Symposium again this year. We've been excited about this event um, pretty much since last year's event uh, and really proud that something, um, a, a conference like this in a virtual setting is so collaborative and so engaging for people and we love being a part of it. Uh, so as Thomas mentioned, I'm Erin Bowers. I'm the Regional Director for Canvas for K-12 um, across Canada. I see lots of familiar faces out there. Hello, familiar faces. And Jeremy May is also probably a familiar face to many of you too, because Jeremy and I are, are a team in Canada. We um, work with school districts who are considering Canvas um, or who are using Canvas. We do a lot of technical support, a lot of presentations, a lot of walkthroughs, um, and uh, customer education as well. So we are pleased to be back here today. We're gonna give you um, our top things you can do in Canvas now. Um, so Jeremy's going to sort of take the reins and share his screen and, and show some of our, our favorite Canvas features. Uh, if you're not familiar with Canvas, it is a learning management system um, that is designed to support learners uh, and teachers uh, from the, the, the entire journey of, of their education. Um, but today we'll be talking about the K-12 um, K-12 experience. And we will have lots of time at the end for questions. We'd like to kind of do like a, an AMA or ask me anything type of format at the end. Um, and always there is the chat here too and the collaborative document that, that Thomas mentioned that can be linked to from uh, the SCED listing. So I'm gonna turn things over to Jeremy. And Jeremy, thanks for wearing a matching t-shirt to me today too. <laughs> yes, I found it. it was, yep, excellent. It was in the, the other drawer of canvas t-shirts. Awesome. Last year we wore toques, but we wanted to switch yeah. it up this year to something a little a little more modern of the times to, to, to meet the times. So I, I do like Bruce's background and Brad's background. I'm, I'm a little torn on the, the beach versus the mountains. I'm, I became a skier this year. So like, I'm, I'm really I'll take all the torn. credit for that, yeah. <laughs> So it's it's hard for me to decide now. I love the beach, but I also actually love a little bit of snow and some skiing. So um, let's see, where do we want to start, Aaron? What are some things? Um, I have I have a couple on the top of my head that I can run through yep. that are like super duper cool. Um, one of my, mm, where do I want to put this one? Do we do it up front? Yeah, why not, right? Let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Um, so one of the, the newer pieces that, that our team has been working on, and there's gonna be some additional work going on to this, um, is around uh, student assignment submissions and, and that workflow. So um, if you've been using Canvas for some time, you, you probably recognize the, the assignment workflow of Canvas where a student goes in, um, they have the, the big blue submit button up in the upper corner. Oh, those assignments don't have submissions. Of course they don't, because this is being recorded and why not, right? That's how it works when you're on the spot. Ah, oh, but of course. Um, so what we're doing is, is really revisioning that, that assignment workflow um, from the ground up for students. So uh, if you're familiar, the old, the old school workflow is the student scrolls down and there's the, the assignment, the description, the due date, the, the rubric. Um, there's a big blue uh, button at the top to submit the assignment. Um, but they wanted to really kind of rethink that from the beginning. So, so they've cleaned up the entire interface um, they've provided a, a more streamlined way for the student to see and get to different parts of an assignment from the beginning all the way through the, the feedback. Um, but one of the big pieces of this, and this is my favorite piece, is um, it's going to offer um, in-browser annotations. So students will be able to take a document. Um, in this case, I'm in a music music class and then I can grab my pen or I could use like my keyboard and I can come in here and I can draw on this document and I can actually write directly on here. Now I'm doing it with my mouse right now. If you're on a touch screen, they have confirmed that you'll be able to use your finger or you'll be able to use um, 
uh, a, a stylus if you're on a, like a surface type device. But what's really cool about this is I've now annotated this as the student and the teacher will be able to see those annotations. They'll be able to feed back to me directly on this. Um, I am being recorded, so I'll be nice. Um, the, current, the current way of students finding the feedback on the documents that are being returned right now, it, it is a little challenging for a student to see what the teacher said on the document. So this is not only going to give students enhanced functionality. Right now, they can annotate on phones and tablets, but we're now extending that to, um, to, the, to the web. So they'll be able to take these documents. They'll be able to write directly on them. Um, step two of this new assignment workflow for a teacher will be um, the teacher will be able to choose a document and say, give every student a copy of this document, kind of like you do with the Google assignment. Um, and then students will be able to come in, write and draw on this. They'll have those inking tools available. So, so annotations, um, the assignment submission workflow can be enabled. Uh, it's, it's new assignments in an account if you're a Canvas admin and you don't see it in there. Um, your CSM may have to turn that on. If you are and you see it in there, um, you can give it a try. If you're a teacher in Canvas and you don't see this or your students haven't seen this, it may just need to be turned on so you can give it a try. It's a feature flag that you can enable, um, but it works in tandem with our new RCE to give you that enhanced functionality. So this is probably one of my most favoritist, yeah, we'll say that, my, my most favoritist things that our, our team has been working on. Um, because we've had uh, annotation on the, the student app for some time now and, and web-based annotation um, is something that schools have been asking for. So uh, again, this is, you don't have to create a special document for students to work on. Um, you know, Microsoft documents that you put in here or PDF type documents you put in here, um, we'll, we'll get that functionality. So really, really cool extension of, of what students will be able to do in, in the web on Canvas. Um, so I, I'm really excited about that. Um, Quick question, Jeremy, on that one. Yeah. Um, so this is a similar interface that SpeedGrader, kind of the same functionalities as SpeedGrader. Yes. Will it also work on tablets for students? Will they be yes. able to on iPad app and all that or? Yeah, cool. Yep. So yeah, so this is, um, so we're going with this, we're going from app to web parity. So yeah, you'll be able to do all of this on, on the app or you'll be able to do it all on the web now. Um, I've got my, my teacher account here. So what I can, I'll show you, like if the teacher goes in to, to assess the student work, um, you'll see like the student just did those annotations. So I can go on as the teacher and I can mark on this now the student has finished and I can say, you know, uh, check your time signature. Um, leave that feedback and then the student would see that feedback. So really, really cool. If anyone would like to attempt to play those notes, if you have a recorder handy yeah. <laughs> or something else, then that might, might be fun. Yeah, um, music is not my forte. I like listening to it. I used to play music, but it's definitely not my strength at this point of my life. So, <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Let's take a look at um, some of the new um, tools for submitting assignments. We can see here that, um, we, that this assignment's been submitted. We can also see that there's a little button on the side there that says new attempt. So maybe let's talk about the ability of the instructor, uh, instructor to um, assign a, a resubmission to students based on the feedback. Yeah. Yes. So let me jump into an assignment. So yeah, this is a, a newer feature as well. You can um, historically in Canvas assignments have had an unlimited submission um, kind of queue on them where a student could continue submitting um, and definitely to something. And that's, you know, it is powerful because if a student submits the wrong thing or if a student submits something that, that you feed back and say, please do it again, it is nice to have that flexibility. But you can now go in and, and limit the number of submissions, but you can also return and reassign things to students. So um, this button in SpeedGrader is, is new down here, this reassign. Um, and what's nice about this is um, there's a there's little bit of a safe safeguard in here because um, I can I can reassign these things to students but it's not going to um, it's not going to 
make it difficult for the student to find it again, it puts it right back on their to-do list. So when I give this back to the student, I can put my comments here. Um, and then when they go into Canvas, they'll see it back on their to-do list. They'll see the feedback that I've left them. So it's not gonna be difficult for them to find or know that I've, I've signed, uh, reassigned this and sent it back to them. So as you're looking at SpeedGrader, um, and you're looking at the different submissions and number of types that a student can do. So I've sent this back to this student already. Um, I can go in and see what all the students have done. It is a really, really cool capability now that limits are there, but I can also go in and say, I really need you to redo this. And then it notifies them. So they, they are aware that you left the feedback that they need to go redo it. Um, and then they would just, you would still see up here each iterative submission they've made, um, but some, some additional granular control on that. And, and where you would find the, the assignment limits is in your assignment settings. Um, you're gonna see this submission attempts allowed and you can still leave it unlimited, but then you can say, um, you know, I want 10, maximum of 10 or, or three. I don't want them to turn it in any more than three times. So definitely something um, that people have been asking for because you leave feedback and you can let students redo it, but it wasn't until they went to the feedback to know that they needed to redo it. Now it's gonna give them that, that visual notification and put it back on the to-do list to get it done. So I have a couple of questions uh, just in the collaborative document uh, mm -hmm. around the stylus use. and Because um, I think it, it might be somebody who hasn't had experience with SpeedGrader and using the stylus um, oh, yeah. from the teacher perspective. So they're, I think, asking on behalf of the student's perspective, you know, what is the delay like when using a stylus? And maybe other people who have used SpeedGrader can, can answer that as well. And the other question is for editing and erasing, moving, et cetera, handwritten stylus work. Does it auto block the writing? If yes, how much is auto blocked at one time? So the, the input is um, fairly instant. If, if you're on like a tablet, um, it's gonna pick it up using the, the tablet settings for the stylus. On the web, I have had the ability to test. Um, it's, it's been confirmed that the stylus will work and the times that I've seen folks using on the teacher side, um, like, a, like a surface type device, is it's, it's as you write, it picks it up. So it's been, very fast in my experience. I haven't seen any devices that run um, with any kind of delay or lag in, in the screen and the, and the writing. So, um, so that's something that until it comes out um, and I have a device to test it on, I couldn't 100% check and should be sure, but there, there isn't anything I've seen, at least in the devices I have that has a really um, large you know, lag or any kind of delay in that. Oh, there's my confetti. There's confetti. Uh, yeah, when it comes to the, the writing itself, um, there, there is a little bit of a difference right now. And I, I'm, um, I'll have to verify how they're going to make these changes. Right now, what happens with annotations through the web like this is if I draw, it's going to combine them together. So if you're familiar with how speed grader works from the teacher perspective, it does block handwritten comments together into these chunks that I can go in and accept. Um, I can go in and clear those annotations. Um, so if I wanted to get rid of those, it does have the, uh, oops, I hit the wrong button there. Um, so it does have the other tools like highlight, like text entry. So you can go in on, on mobile right now, it's a little more flexible as far as like erasure um, and, and inking. Uh, but they're going to be working on some of those things. So that way there's more parity between the two. But yeah, as far as, as, far as I know on, on like lag and, and any kind of delay, there shouldn't be much, if any, um, on the devices that, that you would notice. And just a follow-up question around um, other, you know, uh, we're talking about tablet computers and, and tablets like an iPad uh, with mm -hmm. Apple Pencil or whatever, but does it work with... Um, with annotating tablets like a Wacom tablet or an XP Pen tablet as well. Yeah, the um, I was I was talking to our product team about this the other day uh, when they started announcing some of these changes, and they they did confirm that on um, any 
any touch screen device, you would be able to use like your finger, any device that has any formal type of um, inking input, um, either through stylus or finger would, would work inside of that frame. So there shouldn't be any, any limitations based on the type of device you're using to input. Um, and, and if there are, our team will likely address those as they come up. So um, specifics, I'm not so sure right now, just because it's, it's not available. They haven't given it to us in full to test, um, but our product team has confirmed that, that in general, like, like a touchscreen Chromebook, um, you could use your finger to draw on it if you're on like a, a surface type tablet with, a, with a, a Wacom or bamboo pen, you could draw on it with that device. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. And again, because it uses the same interface as SpeedGrader, um, if it's working around SpeedGrader right now for the teacher's perspective, then it should work for students as well, yep. I would presume. Yep. Okay, yes. yeah. cool, thank yep. you. Same tool, which is really nice. Same tool um, that's doing SpeedGrader is what we got for the students. Just to check, is anybody um, in the session not familiar with SpeedGrader? Is it, um, would it be helpful to, to give a little overview of, of our SpeedGrader tool? Oh, I think it probably would. So let's jump into the speed grader, <laughs> sure. and have a peek at that. Yeah, so we, can be so, too, we can be super flexible with this. We just go on the fly. Yeah, so speed grader, um, as Thomas has mentioned, this is the, the teacher grading tool. So this is where um, as, as an instructor, um, this is my marking and feedback portal. Students are submitting work and evidence to me. Um, I have that bank of inking tools here so I can ink, I can highlight, I can write text on these. So I can come in here, draw, make point specific comments about the, the work the student is doing. Um, it's where I would assess the student work as well. So in this case, I have a rubric attached. I'm going to go through and choose the, the levels or the criteria that the student is, is working on and then how they're performing on those. And then I'm going to leave some additional comments. And this is something, um, it, it got a lot of positive feedback um, even before the, the pandemic and remote learning really, really started. But being able to personalize that feedback, I can add text to, to this assignment and I can tell the student through text, hey, this is what you need to change. This is what I liked. Um, but what teachers have really, gravitated to is being able to capture a short media recording of themselves working through this with the student. Hey, on slide two, I noticed this, or in paragraph three, this is what I saw and this is how it sounded. I left feedback, make those adjustments and redo the, you know, redo the, the work. So you can really personalize that feedback. So now I see what the student did. I give them um, you know, a quick overview of how they did, but I can really clearly articulate the why. Why did you, or why didn't you, or how could you really take this, this feedback and apply it? Um, and and SpeedGrader is a spectacular way to collect that work because um, this tool over here, um, we call it DocViewer. Um, it's essentially the tool that powers what students give you. So in this case, it's a PowerPoint presentation. Um, but maybe I have a student who wants to write a website. Cool, I can see the website here. If I wanted to go to the website and, and take a look at what this student made, I can. Um, if the students record multimedia, I can see you know, that video here. I can give them feedback on that video. Um, so really SpeedGrader opens, opens up the opportunity for you to say, demonstrate the skill in a way that makes sense for you. And then I'll look at it and give you feedback on it, um, really kind of regardless of what, what the student gives you. So we support a, a huge variety of types of submissions like pictures and media files and um, you know documents and PDFs. So uh, you can also look at this work on, on, the, um, on the go. If you wanted to download the teacher app to a phone or a tablet, like an iPad, we have the teacher app. So you'll have access to all of this um, marking and feedback on any device you have. Just like students can do their work and submit from any device, you'll be able to review feedback and, and do the, the same thing on any device that you have. Um, not, that, not that people like to do it on a phone because it is a little bit smaller screen, uh, than like a tablet, like an iPad, but it is definitely something that 
we've heard a ton of feedback from teachers on because it really does kind of change the game when it comes to marking and feedback because um, I, I have a huge opportunity to say what what or how do you want to do this and then I can see that here so um, yes. really cool tool so when um, when when marking is finished um, you can also go into the the grade book that's associated here and see where those that feedback or those those marks or um, points or whatever it is it's all flexible where they exist and then within the grade book there's also a number of other tools you can use here for communication with students yeah message students too is is another thing um it 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 lets me quickly communicate out to students and say hey if you scored less than a, than a 15 on this um, I want you to redo it so I can customize this message here. These are all um, blind carbon copies. So students won't know who's on this thread, um, but we'll, we'll inbox this to them. We can email it to them. We can push notify it to them, um, but I can send them a quick note and say, hey, I left some feedback on this. You didn't do so well. Go ahead and give it another shot. Or, hey, you haven't turned this in yet and it needs to be done by tomorrow. You should probably get it done tonight. So, so really quick way for me to, to stay on top of like what students are doing, how they're doing, um, reach out, communicate with them, um, you know, in a, in a way that, that doesn't require me to go somewhere else. I don't have to go to an email program. I don't have to find another tool to communicate. I can really do all of that through Canvas. Yeah, if we jump over to the learning mastery gradebook as well, it's a different type of view of the gradebook or of um, a student's progress. Yeah, let me, I'm going to pull up the one in yours. Yours looks so much better than mine does. It's, yeah, mine, mine's sad. I need to fix it. <laughs> there we go. I see Fine. all my demo there students in there. I see that they're all doing really well here. Yeah, yeah. Aaron, Aaron's the better teacher. Mine is just like terrible. Uh, so this is this is a, a breakdown of of any of the outcomes um, or standards that I'm assessing in my course, how students are performing on them, and then the individual breakdown. So I can see, you know, Dominic's doing really well across the board. Carl um, is a little behind on this one. Maddie, yeah, she's, something's going on here. So I can jump into a specific student, see like a quick health check, um, but then also dive to that next level. Oops, I, hit the, I gotta move the, the floating heads around. I keep clicking on things because they're in the way. Um, but I can go down to that next layer of granularity and see, okay, um, you know, Maddie is working on 13 things. Um, we've, we've looked at this one four times and she's consistently not meeting expectations. So maybe it's time for an intervention. We're going to work on these skills a different way. Um, this one, um, wow, she's, uh, she's made a lot of growth on this one. So she's, she's near that, um, that level of threshold for, for meeting and exceeding. So she's doing really well on that one. And this is something that students can see as well. So they can see, I mean, my trajectory on this is really great. I started um, here at the early, I'm approaching, and now I'm meeting expectations on this, this outcome or this standard. So really cool data for, for the student, but also for me to see how my students are doing, where they are. Um, and all of this gets generated automatically when you um, align an outcome with, with standards for, for the assessment of work all of that data shows up in here automatically for you. So you don't have to do any, any aggregation of data. Um, and then every time you use that, it creates a new data point for that assignment or assessment that you're doing. Can you just um, either Aaron or Jeremy um, confirm about the BC K to 12 curricula, curricular mm -hmm. competencies and contents, you know, standards being preloaded mm -hmm. in Canvas? Yeah, so those are preloaded. So we, we have access to all of the curriculum standards across Canada. So when you have a Canvas instance, um, as part of the implementation, we load those in. And so that when you're creating an assignment um, or an assessment, you're able to align that to a particular standard that, that addresses your uh, provincial requirements. 
Yeah, I was just, I was actually before this, um, before this demo, I was chatting with um, one of our writers about that. And um, he was like, I didn't know we had those. <laughs> I was like, yes, we do. Um, so yeah, they're, they're in there. Um, we can make those available. Um, it's funny. I was actually chatting. He's like, who got these for you? And it's like, well, funny story. One of our previous product managers was named Stephen King. Uh, <laughs> he was the product manager that got us this. The, the, other, Stephen yes. the other, other Stephen not, King. Yes. Not the one we, we didn't have to break his legs for changing the story. <laughs> but yeah, it was very ironic. His name was Stephen King. It was great. Um, awesome. Let's see. I, I want to showcase this one. I don't think many okay. people know about this one. Um, this is a pretty new change too. And this is like, um, th there's, there's actually two pieces to this story that I've, I've actually had a few questions about lately. Um, next year, uh, I start my physical science course again, and I want to bring my, my old physical science course in. Um, there's actually a really cool setting in here that I can adjust all of my due dates in my new course. So if my old course started, um, I'm actually going to change this. We're going to say um, August 1st, 2017, and it ended um, December 6th. You know, I'm going to say, all right, you know, this year my course runs from April 1st to uh, August 1st. Um, so what it will do is take all of the pre-assigned due dates on my assignments. It's going to adjust them within this new date range. And then I can say, I want everything that was on a Sunday, because um, when it shifts, it's not going to look at days of the week by default. But I want those Sunday assignments to be due on Monday. I want my Saturday assignments to be due on Friday. Um, you know, Wednesday is lab day. So if it falls on a Wednesday, we're going to bump that to a Thursday. Um, and that will bring everything in removes and changes and makes all of those updates for me. Um, but another tool that we've worked on for assignment updates is, is this bulk or batch updater. So when you're on an ass the assignments page in Canvas, um, it hides behind the little kebab menu, the kebab. Uh, <laughs> The snowman. I call that a snowman. I'm sorry. Snowman. But did you just call it a kebab? <laughs> now I'm hungry. <laughs> so, yes, the, the, the menu here, uh, this as edit assignment dates. What this tool does is provide batch assignment editing capabilities. So if I pull a course in, let's say I pulled a course in from Commons um, or a teacher shared some things with me that don't have due dates on them. Um, the old way would be to go into the assignment, click edit, click the due date, add the due date, or go to the calendar and drag and drop from undated. But now I can go in here, I see a list of all my assignments, I can quickly add due dates or change due dates on all of these things right here. Um, the other thing that's really cool is I was talking to a school that was like, yeah, but let's say, uh, you know, I missed school and I need to, to shift all of the due dates from this date to this date by by a day. Okay, so what I can do is, is I could either do by date range and it will filter out anything in that range or I can just highlight, I only have a couple of assignments that this is going to apply to um, and I can batch edit these. And I'm gonna say, I want these assignments to be shifted one or two or seven days in advance. So maybe I need to just quickly update some things. So when I do this, it's automatically going to switch those due dates, make those changes. I hit save and now all of those due dates have changed for me. Um, so this is, this is a really cool tool where I can go in and make small or large scale adjustments to my course um, right, from, right from my course. The, the tool that the precursor tool of this was actually an assignment due date updater spreadsheet that one of our, um, one of the, the Canvas users at a, a school wrote um, that you could go into Google Sheets and do this. So our team was like, well, hey, let's just make that a Canvas thing. So this is um, hands down one of the, the coolest things for assignment updating, you know, batch updating. And, you know, I can come in here, I can actually, um, you know, I can remove things. I need to move these heads around. So I can revert the date changes. So, oh, I didn't mean to change those dates. I actually wanted to leave those alone. Um, that's okay. You can do that. So that's something I wanted to showcase that because it's super cool. I've, I've had a few people ask about it recently and I'm like, yes, let's see that. <laughs> let's see. What else, Aaron? Oh, you're muted. 
sorry, um, dogs barking here. So, oh. <laughs> uh, um, how about the rich content editor, new rich content editor? Oh, People yes. haven't seen that. It's a really nice way of building content in canvas. Um, we've always had a, a, a really good, uh, content editor that that's been really easy for people to pick up the ability how to use it um, but we've made some improvements to it recently that uh, we think are pretty great that we'd like to share with you yeah um, so so you'll notice if, if you've seen the old rce or rich content editor um, it was kind of a blah just a standard tool with with two two lines and, and normal normal settings in it um, this one kind of buckets things by by need so you know i've got my my text adjustment tools here these are my uh, my power tools right here so um like my drill actually plugins um, these are kind of formatting and adjustment tools over here um, but this is where the biggest changes have come in. Canvas has historically had some really neat powers as far as what you can do inside of here, but we've now adjusted that and I can say, okay, I want the word overview um, to take students to another location in my course. Maybe it's gonna take them to an assignment um, or it's gonna take them to a specific assessment. So I can click on that and now overview becomes a link to this assignment for students to do. Um, I can also throw in pictures. Um, we've actually updated our image search tool. Uh, the old tool was Flickr based and, and Flickr kind of flicked out. It wasn't very good anymore. Um, so now we use Unsplash, which is a much more robust database of um, free to use licensed uh, imagery. So I can go in here, uh, I can do a quick search for uh, volcanoes. This is from USGS. This is from um, just a photographer. It properly attributes these uh, images to the photographer, um, but I can go in here and I can embed this video or this picture in, resize it. Um, the new RCE also supports copy paste directly from other websites. So if you're on a site, you've got an image, you can right click copy image, and then you can paste right here into the RCE. So it's a lot more flexible when it comes to what do you want to put in here. Um, so I can link, I can actually take uh, the URL for a picture from a site, put that in here. Um, so it's opened up some additional functionalities. It's streamlined accessing the materials. Um, another thing, there, there was a secret menu uh, in, in the Canvas Rich Content Editor always. But kind of like the secret menu at In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You got to like know what Starbucks. to ask for to find it. But yes. now we we have surfaced it now. It we have, and it was it was always open by like function option nine or something on a Mac or like F eight on a PC. Um, but we've now just made it there because it was an accessibility menu for folks who used keyboards to to navigate and and make Canvas pages instead of a mouse. Um, so they've they've brought that right here to the top and it gives you a lot of additional functionality so it's just like the menu and a lot of the the web tools that you're used to so you can actually edit this in full screen um, you can insert things from here um, if if you're a you know if you want to go in and make mass changes to things you can actually go in we've got fonts now um, the the elementary teachers are happy because we have comic sans now um, so, so there are, there are um, you can do wingdings. That's my favorite one. I love wingdings as well. I, I'm, it's cute. They're really easy to read. So some really neat things that you can do here. I can actually format this as code. Um, so if you're pasting HTML inside of Canvas, you can make some changes. Um, you've got a word count here, so I can see how many words I have in here. Um, but yeah, this is this is some updates that. Um, our RCE really kind of just needed. It was it was um, something that had been coming for a long time. If there are any HTML folks out there, our HTML editor is actually, it's called the pretty HTML editor now. Um, so it actually pre-formats and, and highlights all of the code structures so you know what you're looking at inside of here. So no more hunting and pecking for where's that table line, where's that specific, you know, tag for my, my HRAT. Like I, you can actually see um, a much cleaner view. You can always switch back to the raw view if you want, but it's like, ah, why would I do that? When why would you? So much nicer. Um, so yeah, the RCE has had a ton of work recently to, to really just kind of bring it up to a point where it fits 
the, the newer ways of creating and modifying and editing um, opens up some things that have been there in the past, but folks really didn't know about because, I mean, if you didn't know the secret key command for, for that menu, you never knew it existed because it, it never, it didn't show up visually unless you had like a screen reader on and that would call mm -hmm. that element out. So, all right. What else? What are any some questions? I'm just I wondering, wondering if there's like, any questions yeah. in the doc. We've got about seven minutes officially left. Yeah, I um, don't see any additional questions in, okay. the, in the doc right now. Um, there's Perfect. some great tips about analyzing your in and out burger. Yes, um, but an, an, <laughs> if you use the, the word animalize. Thanks to Arthur for that tip. Animalize <laughs> your in and out burger. I don't even know what that means if it comes with a tail or if it's still moving in the bun or whatever. I don't want to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Could be anything. Um, another thing I'd like to highlight that people may or may not have seen is the ability for teachers to share content with each other directly oh, from when yes. they may be building uh. a page or creating modules. Um, so our course building tools. Um, typically, people start with the modules uh, in order to build that playlist for students to work through as, as part of their course. Um, but then a lot of teachers are working on these types of things collaboratively, uh, whether it's in a uh, subject area team or, you know, other kind of structure. So we've made it easy for teachers to share with each other what they're doing through the send to tool. And this appears in a number of different places. Uh, in Canvas. So I could find uh, the, my collaborator within here and send that module or module item uh, right over to them. Yeah, that's and, and this is nice because like I mentioned, I can I can send a piece of this so I can send just this one thing to those folks. I can send the whole thing to those folks. Um, if, if you've heard of our commons tool, which is the library, um, we're, we're kind of bypassing the library because historically, if I wanted to give Aaron something, I would have to take it, put it in the library, Aaron would have to go to the library, find it, and then pull it back out. This now bypasses that and lets me say, hey, Aaron, here's that, that, that assignment you asked for, or I created this module of content that, that you wanted to have. So um, this is much more, much more conducive to the way teachers collaborate. Um, the old school method, I, if I wanted a lesson from another teacher, we'd walk into the copier room and they'd put it on the copier and I'd walk out with a nice warm stack of papers and they're not as warm uh, unless your keyboard's And hot. they don't but smell <laughs> like that warm stack of freshly printed papers too. You don't get that toner fragrance mm, or- I love know, that the, toner the fragrance. The mimeograph and so, uh, but it's, it's a, a super powerful way to, um, to collaborate on things and then quickly distribute that out to, to other teachers that you're working with. So a lot of really neat um, stories have come out of that. And you can also, if you're teaching multiple um, of the same course or similar of the same course, copy to is similar in that instance where um, I can just say that I wanna put this in my other course. So I wanna add this to my other biology course. And then it says, okay, you know, it's gonna put a copy of that in there. Um, if it's something that belongs in a module, um, like if I wanted to send a, a piece of this to another course, it will actually let me choose where it goes. I want to put this in that intro module and I want it at the top or I want it to go at the last part of that module. So you, you can not only send these things to other people, you can also send them to the other classes you're teaching if there's some similarity or you know, some consistency in, in the subject but you need them to be independent of one another, you can still really easily get stuff from one class to another. Those are awesome. all great tips. We've got a couple of questions. Um, sure. One question around any specific tools or tips or hints uh, right near the end that you wanna to give to anybody teaching asynchronous or in a self-paced environment? Uh, anything that stands out that you wanted to highlight? Yeah, so um, one of the biggest things in these asynchronous environments is using uh, module requirements and prerequisites. So this allows you to define what students are going to need to do, what order or how they're going to need to do those things. So on this assignment, I need them to, to score at least a 20 out of 27. Um, and then 
This is, this is a newer feature too, published final grade when the module is complete. So until the student finishes things, it's not gonna show them how they're doing in the grade book. I'll get to see, but it's, it's not going to like constantly bombard them with updates on the, on the things that I'm assessing. So, so this allows you to kind of define that, that flow, the structure, what students are going to, to be doing um, inside of the course. So that's really a big thing. And another thing that you could leverage uh, for students who are asynchronous is uh, mastery paths. So this is gonna let you set up what's next. So when a student takes this assessment or does this assignment, um, what are they going to see next? So if I don't have the ability to provide a direct intervention with a student who needs assistance, today, um, I can pre-assign some work for them and some resources for them to see. So the next time we get together through Zoom or, or another platform, um, these are the things that the students who require some additional assistance will be working on. And then I get to see who's on each one of these pathways. I can see three of my students need some additional assistance. So maybe I'm gonna do a Zoom session with just these three. Um, you know, my middle group here, I have Jonathan and Oliver. So we're going to meet on Wednesday next week. So um, that would be the biggest is, is really module requirements, prerequisites, and then um, using mastery paths to really kind of help define some of that. What's next if, if you're not seeing your students every day. Perfect. Those are great tips. Thank you. And uh, yeah, Kathy and Stephanie, I think Aaron answered it and I did as well. Uh, new assignments has to be turned up by, on by your admin, correct? Yes. <laughs> and um, and then there's one other question. We'll probably finish up with this one, maybe um, formally, and then we can just have some chitter chatter. But uh, sure. are there any future development plans for the portfolio feature before we get to the TikTok dance? Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, and yes, and yes. Um, there's not a lot I can I can talk about talk about with it, but yes, there's a, a significant amount of work that's gone on. Um, there's actually a tool that that we are working on making more formally available. Um, we, we purchased a uh, tool called Portfolio, uh, and it, it currently is available right now for um, students who are over the age of 13. Uh, it's a free tool that students can use, but it's also something we can enable in, in Canvas accounts. So it's something that we are working on. We're working with that team on how we can deploy it more globally. Uh, but yes, there, there is a significant amount of work going on behind the scenes with portfolios, e-portfolios, and, and how those would look and work. Awesome. Alicia says, thank you for sharing. That's exciting. And she's looking forward to it. Um, awesome. Good. I think I, that's it for questions right now in the chat, but that doesn't mean people can't keep asking questions. But I think you have this I just wrap up here. This we up. Yeah, yeah, this is... I, so... <laughs> I was wondering who pulled that up so, if we're being yeah, Zoom bombed by I, Catwoman. Uh, or... No, so it's it's uh, it, when when you said TikTok, I was like, wait, ah, I, I forgot about this. So this is something. This is actually really old, like 2012, way back in the day, the early days of Canvas. They had I was a, just a child. They had they had a competition for teachers using Canvas to create like a like some kind of like what they love about Canvas. And and this, um, she was, she's a college professor. She actually- Canvas is like, supposed to be Canvas, Canvas. Canvas is the place to be. Canvas, Canvas. Do you know what we have? Red Chrome, Help Center, <laughs> Global Math, Canvas. So that's our TikTok, Erin. I am <laughs> I'm speechless <laughs> for once in my life. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, she won. And that year at, at InstructureCon, everybody was like, oh my gosh, you're Catwoman 33. They, they, like they knew who she, it was hilarious. So, so that I, I had awesome. to pull that out when you said TikTok. I was like, I have the perfect thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, because I didn't actually have a TikTok dance. Uh, keyed up. I was just hoping everyone would stay to the end. So um, <laughs> that's great. And it looks like most did. Um, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll formally wrap it up here as a huge thank you on behalf of BC EDL PSA and, and of course the whole conference committee and every, everybody here, all attendees and, and uh, sponsors and everyone uh, and presenters. 
we will keep this room open so that you guys mm -hmm. can chat and and ask Aaron and Jeremy any other questions or just um, I don't know make a Catwoman thirty four video if you need <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, if you happen um, to have a leather cat suit, you yeah. can don it now. <laughs> sure. There's no yeah no rush to close this session, so we'll keep it open. But we do also want to give folks a break if they need a break before your next session start at eleven thirty. Um, but yeah, thanks again so much to Aaron and Jeremy. Lots of thanks in the chat as well from people. Um, so yeah, awesome. And just a reminder too, if you are going, if, if you are leaving the room that we do have the Kumo space open and it's a great thing to check out if you haven't had a chance to go there yet. Um, it's a great way to actually socialize, interact. You literally get to walk around the room, whether it's the coffee shop or the rooftop bar where you can pour yourself a drink. It's a really cool way to actually interact and, and, and kind of have some, have some check-ins with people. So again, that's the Kumo space. Uh, let me get the link here in the, in the chat, but uh other than that thanks again to aaron and jeremy and i'll just leave the room open feel free to grab the mic chat ask questions have at her yeah um awesome. just to mention one thing that we do miss out on a little bit from uh going from sort of an in-person conference to a virtual setting is the lack of ability to go and grab cool swag so if you are interested in some secret surprise canvas swag you can send me an email i'm just going to pop my email address here in the chat leather cat suit right so if you would like a leather cat suit <laughs> a canvas branded leather cat suit then we will send one to you and uh, just shoot me an email. My email is in the chat there. Um, you don't also have to just request swag. You can also uh, ask me any questions about Canvas, about any Canvas features, anything like that. I'm always happy to respond. And I'll just stop the recording here because I think that's the end of the formal session. But again, keep feel free to keep chatting or ask questions and we'll be good to go.